On the last lesson, we spoke about commands. And first, I wanted to clarify a mistake I made. In the previous lesson, we were doing things like this. We had a command, and then we would instantiate the handler, for example, a transfer money handler, and we were passing the command as an argument to the handler's constructor. That is incorrect, and I'm sorry I presented that. I'm not sure how I didn't notice that mistake. You usually want the handler's constructor to have its dependencies. That way you can actually instantiate handlers, for example, using a container. And then you can simply pass a command to the handler's method like I'm doing right here. Again, sorry about that. On this lesson, we're going to talk about the command bus. And today I have a new example to present. We have a very simple application that allows users to transfer money to other users. I also created two tasks. The first task asserts that a user can transfer money to a different user. So we have a sender, we have a receiver, we are adding $100 to the sender's wallet. We're making an API call and then we're making sure that the receiver has $100 and that the sender has $0 in their balance. We also have a task that asserts that they cannot send money if they have insufficient balance. So we're adding $99 to the sender, trying to send $100 and make sure that it doesn't go through. The API is also pretty simple. We have a user model, we have a transaction model, and a transaction can have a type. It can either be a transfer or it can be a deposit. For example, if you were to deposit money into your account. And then we have a wallet abstraction that handles transactions for us. It calculates the balance, it creates a deposit, and it also initiates a transfer, including checking if you have the necessary balance to make a transfer. If we run those tasks, they should pass, and they are. And if we go into the controller, you can see that we are instantiating a command we're injecting the handler on the constructor. And that's because we want Laravel to inject its dependencies and it only has one, which is the mailer. So it finds the sender, it finds the receiver, it uses the wallet API to create a transfer, and then it sends an email to both the receiver and the sender that they've gotten and that they've sent money. Okay, this works, but we are instantiating the command handler manually. So let's see how we can use a command buzz and have the command bus do the actual action for us. I created a command bus class right here. It doesn't have anything, so let's start writing this. The first thing we have to do in a command bus is map commands to handlers. And we have two options here. We can either use a static property or we can set the command bus as a singleton in the container. Let's go with the former. I'm going to create a static property and then a static method called map, which expects an array as well. Doesn't return anything. And for now, we can just say that the map is going to be the received map. Whoops, this is static. There we go. We also want a handle method because we want to use the command bus to figure out which handler to call for us based on a given command. Let's add a handle method that expects a command instance. And we don't have that class yet, that interface actually. But let's go ahead. It's going to return mixed. Now, Many command handlers do not return anything, but ours is. So first we have to find the handler, and we can do that by saying that we have a map. We want to find the command, and we can use command class notation that returns the fully qualified namespace for the class. So we now have the handler. We haven't defined the types yet, but let's expect this to be a string. So now we have to resolve that through the container. For this example, let's just use Laravel's container. So let's say app and pass the fully qualified namespace. At this point, we should have the handler with all of its dependencies. And now we can simply do handler. We can call the handle method and pass the command like this. So let's create this interface. We actually want this to be an interface and we only expect a handle method. I'm sorry, we would not expect any method here. Actually, we want an empty interface. And now we can also create an interface for the command handler. So we can go here and say that we want to create an interface. We're going to call it handler. And now we expect a handle method that accepts a command like this. Now that we have some types, we can actually give static analysis some help here. We can say that we expect an array where the key is a command and the value is a command handler. And we can do the same thing here, a command and a handler. Now here, we also know that this is going to be a handler. And now our IDE knows that it can call the handle method. Okay, cool. Let, let's try this. So let me rerun those tasks. They're still passing. 
And let's refactor this to use the command bus. So inside the controller, I no longer want to inject the handler. I want to inject a command bus like this. Let's import this class. And now instead of calling the command handler, we can call the command bus. Let's make transfer money an instance of command and then transfer money handler an instance of the handler interface. Now, the annoying thing about using interfaces is that you have to type in this accordingly. And what you can do is you can add a doc block saying that this is an instance of transfer money handler. Well, not transfer money handler, transfer money. Let's fix this. Or you cannot use an interface. That's an option as well. Theoretically, you could have a single handler for multiple commands or multiple commands going to a single handler, although that's unusual. All right, let's run our task and see what happens. Okay, they failed. Let's see what happens. Undefined array key app wallet transfer money. Okay, let's go into command bus. We haven't mapped anything. So let's go into our app service provider and it doesn't have to be the app service provider, but this is a good option because this is a class that's invoked every time the framework boots. So you just have to make sure that you map your commands before using them. Let's go into the raster method and call our command bus. Nope, command bus, map. And now we can pass an array here. We want to map transfer money into transfer money handler. And let's see what PHP unit is complaining. Okay, we don't have an instance actually. What we have though is a fully qualified namespace. So we can say class string and specify the type we want. And the same thing here, class string and specify the type we want. And let's cut this and put this here as well. Okay, now our IDE understands what's going on and it's not complaining. Let's rerun our tests and they're passing. So we are now using the command bus to handle this. Now, one of the disadvantages is since you're relying on an abstraction here, if you were to use the result somehow, let's say that you want to fetch the transaction and you could call the command bus and call the handle method, your IDE wouldn't really know what this returns, only that it is something, it's mixed. That's what the signature says. So you would have to declare this and specify the type here like this, and then your IDE would understand what's being returned here. So that's a trade off. Now, once you have the command bus, which is really just an interaction layer, you can do many things. You can add middleware, you can do things before handling a command, after handling a command, and it gives you a lot of options. However, it might be overkill for what you need and sometimes actions, AKA self-handling commands or just having the command and having the handler instantiated could be good enough. One of the cool things you can do with command buses is that you can decorate them. So for example, let's use this task real quick and I'm going to increase the deposit to $100. So theoretically, this is going to fail because it will go through. Let's run this, it's failing. But let's go ahead into the handler and just throw an exception right here. Let's say that something went wrong. And in real life code, you might have this doing many things, not just sending an email and things could go wrong. So let's throw an exception and see what happens. Okay, you got a 500. Let's go ahead and remove this assertion real quick. And it's failing. So even though it failed somehow and the users didn't receive their emails or you could have other things going on here, we still made the transaction. Someone still received money. So here's something you could do with a command buzz. You could decorate it. Let's create something called a transaction command buzz. All right, so you could have a command buzz as an interface. We're not gonna do this here. And then what you could do is you could have a handle method that expects a command as usual, like or other one. And what it's going to do is it's going to proxy this into the command bus as usual. Let's add this to the constructor. There we go. And what you could do here is you could actually wrap this in a database transaction. So let's inject database manager. And then you could say something like to be transaction. You want to pass a closure and call the command bus. So now we've added additional functionality on top of the existing command bus. And if we were to go into the controller, instead of injecting the user command bus, we injected the transaction command bus. Let's see what happens. And I just have the exception wrong. We updated this to $100 and the sender should have this, not the receiver. So if we rerun this, 
There we go, it's passing. If we were to remove this and go back to the usual command bus, what's going to happen is the exception is going to happen, but this won't be reversed. And now we simply have an extended version of the usual command bus called the transaction command bus that wraps any command in a transaction. You could also have, for example, you could have a login uh, command bus, which is something that wraps a usual command bus and simply logs everything that happens. And you can wrap one on top of the other. You can decorate them as you wish. You could pass a transaction command bus to a login command bus, and then you would have the transactional aspect of it and also the login aspect of it. All right, let's just revert this to what we had. We don't want this exception being thrown and we want to fix our test. There we go. Let's rerun this. It's passing. Let's see if our other task is passing. It is, and we're back to green. So this is an example of how you can use a command bus. You could also add some checks here, for example, if this is not an instance of a command handler, or if the command is not an instance of command within the mapping that we have in this class, you could throw an exception, for example. And that's something most command buses will do. Ours is very simple, it doesn't. But this is a way to use a command bus. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.